So you recently heard about SaaS, you started looking into it, you're seeing SaaS, you're seeing SCSS. Why is there two SaaSes? What's the deal with that? And which one should you actually be using? That's the questions I'm going to be answering in this video. Hi there, my name is Kevin and it's Friday. That means it's time for a five minute Friday and I'm excited because it's the first five minute Friday of the year. And if you don't know about it, every Friday, I try and do a five minute video looking at a topic within five minutes. And these will not be making the full time every Friday return just yet. Wednesday videos are back on schedule since uh, the break, but we're going to be doing sort of slow integration of these five minute Fridays. But this is the first one in the new year. So happy new year if it's the first video you're watching. It's a month late, but that's OK. And what we're going to be doing, well, SAS versus SCSS. So let's jump right into it and stop wasting our time. So the whole reason SAS was created was to make CSS a bit more awesome and to solve some, well, solve problems with CSS is probably a little bit too strong, but to make CSS better and one of the things um, and more efficient part of a large part of SAS is making the way you're writing your code more efficient. So what they did is they took out the curly braces and they took out the, um, the semicolons. And by doing that, you could write your code a little bit faster because there's less keystrokes. So it works with an indentation system. We're going to see the code of it in one second. It might make a bit more sense, but instead of using curly braces and stuff, it's all about new lines and it's all about indentation. SCSS, it stands for sassy CSS, and it's taking the CSS syntax that you're used to, but it's giving it the superpowers that come with SAS. And this is really handy because you could take a regular CSS file, rename it, you know, take the file extension, switch it from .css to .scss, and now it's valid sassy CSS. So that's really cool that you can just rename something and it's working. Um, so let's dive in and actually see the differences in the code so you can understand a bit more of what's going on. To explore all the differences here, I'm going to be on the site Sassmeister. It lets us write Sass or a CSS on this side and immediately see the output without any setup whatsoever on this side here, which is super handy, especially when you're just learning or getting used to Sass. So first, let's look at some basic stylings of like a nav or something. So I'm writing this in the Sass. So this is the indented one. So I might write something like nav, but I'm not going to do a curly brace. You can see it's actually getting highlighted in red and I'm getting an error because it's expecting a new line. So as soon as I do a new line, I want to tab over and then I would do something like background white, um, box shadow, I don't know, zero, three pixels, zero RGBA, black, 0.2, something like that. Um, and you notice I'm not putting anything here, but it's outputting the semicolons uh, here. It's putting my curly braces and all of that on the CSS side. So it's literally the indent here that's telling it that this background is inside of the nav and this box shadow is inside of the nav there. Um, and then if, say we want to add a little nesting. I could just come down and do UL and then come over and do list style none padding of zero and margin of zero like that. And you'll see here I have my nav and then right away I have nav UL. So it knows it sees this is nested into here and then it's outputting and it knows this is inside of my UL. So it's doing it like that. I could actually select all of this and push shift tab to on nest it and it comes on nested there and I could, uh, whoops, we can go back the other way and all of a sudden it gets nested back in. So sometimes that can be really handy that it's so easy to do that. Um, another thing we could do here instead of nestings, we instead of having a nav UL, you might be cringing at that. We could use our little uh, parent selector that we looked at in the last video and say do something like this. So it comes out as whoops, um, that would be assuming also here we have a class. <laughs> so we have our nav and then a nav list there. Um, so we can do something like that. And there you have everything getting its own class, which it can be useful. Um, so now if I want to do this with SCSS, I'm going to come up to my uh, options here. And we're going to switch from SAS to this syntax. And right away for me, it automatically changed it all over uh, automatically. So that's nice and handy. So you can see I have my semicolons here. I have my um, curly braces. And the curly braces are nested inside of my other curly braces. So the extra curly braces um, can be a little bit annoying when you have like a whole bunch of nested stuff, even though you should probably avoid nesting things too much. Uh, but the nice thing here is you can literally take a CSS file, change its extension, and it's valid because it looks exactly like CSS. You just can add your extra things in it, the parent selector, nesting, uh, mixins, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there you have it. So. Uh, there are a few other differences, not too much, but say a mix in, you write them a little bit differently between the two languages. But the real main difference is the whole curly braces versus uh, indentation of the two of them. 
And as far as which one you should use, well, that's up to you. This is a decision you have to make, but I'll let you know, um, when I first started, I used SAS. I love how it looks. I, it looks so pretty without all the extra stuff getting in the way. I love how it looks. So that's what I started using. Um, and I used it for about two years probably. And the main reason I switched, there was two of them. I started writing more SAS and putting it in my videos. And I just figured it's easier for people who are unfamiliar with it to know what's going on just because it's so familiar. Um, you know, it looks so much like CSS. It's not that hard to figure out. And also, I write a lot of CSS anyway. When I'm teaching CSS in the classroom or when I'm doing videos where I'm just using CSS, I kept forgetting semicolons. And that was really, really annoying. Um, as far as for you, though, it's your choice. But uh, SCSS is a lot more popular. Um, I also think it's easier to learn just because instead of having to learn the whole new syntax, not that it's hard, it's, it's not a complicated syntax, but instead of having to sort of change the way you're writing your CSS, you just keep writing CSS exactly how you're writing it. You don't make any changes, you don't do anything, but you go, okay, I'm gonna do exactly what I was doing, but I can add variables in here, or I can add a parent selector, or I can add a mix in, and you, you can add in little things here and there once you, know, I got this variable thing down. Okay, now let me look at mixins. Oh, I figured out mixins. Let me figure out functions now. And you can sort of slowly build on top without changing anything you're already doing. So I think that's really handy. I do think that's partially why it's so much more popular because it is quite a bit more popular. So much so that pretty much every tutorial that exists out there that I've seen uses uh, SCSS. There are a few SAS. Most of them are using SCSS. Even SAS's website defaults to showing you a demonstration or demo pieces of code with SCSS rather than SAS. So, so it is a much more popular language, but you shouldn't necessarily go with it just because it's more popular. Um, you should find the one that you think you would prefer to use, that you'd want to use, and just go with that. Because at the end, it's you who's writing the code. So find whichever one you like better and that you think would be, you know, which, which, which one's more up your alley, and you go with that one. With the one caveat is if you are working in a team, you got to do what your team's doing because that just makes everybody's life a lot easier. But if it's just for you, Choose whichever one is cooler or which one you th just speaks to you a little bit more and go with that one. If you're watching this, I'm assuming you're pretty new to SAS. And if you'd really like to get a, a deep dive into it, I do have a course on it. So you can check the description below for a link on that. But it takes a really deep dive. It goes from beginner to real world. It's the name of the course. Uh, so I'll let you, if you're interested in that, I'll let you go and check out the link for more information on that. Otherwise, we're done here. Thank you so much for watching. Looks like I went a little bit over five minutes on that one, but hey, it, it happens. And I'd rather not rush it too much because I know that's one complaint you guys have is sometimes with these five minute Fridays, I'm just talking too fast or squeezing things in too quickly or glossing over things a little too much. So uh, yeah, sometimes these might get stretched a little bit, but I'll try my best in the future to stay under five minutes. Also, a massive thank you to my Patreons. Thank you guys just for all the support you're giving me with an extra special shout out to Lauren, who's my supporter of awesome. Thank you very much for your extra special support. If you have any comments, any questions, whatever it is, there is a discussion we can have down below in the comments or you can come and meet us over at the community. Come join, hang out with us. Uh, you can ask questions. Maybe it's a little bit easier over there because we can have a better discussion. If you want to join the community, it's just a Discord server. Lots of cool stuff going on. There's a discussion right now about uh, CMSs, what people are using and stuff like that. It's really interesting. So come on, join us over there. Ask questions about anything you want. There's people who are brand new to web development, like completely, completely new. There's people with years of experience in it. It's welcome to everybody. Uh, so come and join us over there. It's a nice place to come and hang out. There is a link to that in the description as well. That's it for this week. Have an amazing Friday. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.